Let's That is right to get some water. Shalom, family, most high in Christ. Bless. How y'all doing? How's everybody doing? Orlando, um, we're blessed to be here for another one, and um, today's topic is going into thoughts and actions, okay, so um, about a week ago, we went over um, our, one of our forefathers, uh, King Manasseh, and we looked at some of the things that he did uh, that were absolutely horrible in the kingdom uh, of Israel, especially as a king. And we saw the effect that it had on himself. We saw the effect that it had on the people. Now, one of the things, you know, that I kind of been looking at within, you know, uh, studying is the actions that we take. And what we realize is the actions that we take, it comes from the thoughts that we think. Okay. So a lot of times what happens is we'll think about something. We don't kill the thought and then it becomes action. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about thoughts and actions, okay? The actions that succeeds, proceeds, precedes from the thoughts, all right? So um, we're going to start with that, all right? Shalom, shalom, all praises, sign Christ bless. So let's go ahead and get started, all right? Um, we're going to send up prayers. We're going to face the east, all right? Face our home from here, America, Jerusalem is east. All right, so sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, uncover your heads. Let's get started. No? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, O Lord. We ask that you watch over our leadership, that you continue to um, put your vision with them, and that we continue to walk after your law, statutes, and commandments to bring forth justice and judgment in the earth for your word. We ask for that you watch over the women that are with children, that you bless them to have a, a safe, speedy delivery, Lord. We ask that you watch over the children uh, in Israel, that you keep them safe, guard their minds, their hearts, their spirits, Lord, and protect them. We ask that you watch over the sisters. Watch. Uh, we pray that you watch and heal those that are sick mentally, um, physically, emotionally, Lord, and that you just bring restoration and continue to heal us to bring us to one under uh one in the name of jesus the christ lord that we continue 
to fight the good fight and endure until the end. We ask that you bring swift judgment upon our enemies and the nations that have always risen up against us. Praise the prophets that have been in thy name, Lord. Jesus Christ, and we pray. I'm out. All right. All praises to the Most High. All right, so again, we're going to go into the topic of thoughts and actions. As of late, I've been really looking at my actions, my thoughts, and paying attention to it. And what I've realized is that before you create the action, you actually speak it. You, you can hear what you're going to do. You can hear what you're saying before you even say it. All right, I know it might sound weird, but Lord willing, it'll make sense soon. Let's go into Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. This is where we're going to start. Uh, one of the four parents we're going to read about today is Hannah or Hannah, Hannah uh, in 1 Samuel. But we're going to start. Uh, actually, can I get a scribe? The music keeps coming in and out. Huh. There's no music, sis. Not on this side. Music playing? One second. New home ownership can be a real eye opener, but it's the perfect time to look into home. Music plan. Can y'all hear? How 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 is? I don't hear any music. There's music in the background. Huh. Give me one second. You hear any music? No, sir. Israel, can y'all still hear it? All right. Oh, you know what it was? We was, uh, what's that thing? The SoundCloud. I think the SoundCloud was on. Remember, I was playing the music before, and it went on like a little random rant. All right, all praises, Israel. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but let's get it. All praises. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. All right, so uh, can I get a scribe, anybody to scribe for me? Uh, a soldier, preferably. If not a soldier, then uh, I want to get a brother. All praises, bro. Thank you. No more music. All praises. Read that one more time. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light. Right. So the path of the just is as the shining light. The just, let's see what just is. Let's go to, um, what is it, Ezekiel 18 and 5. I think that's the one I want. Is that the precept for just? Yeah. So it says the path of the just is as the shining light. Okay. Let's see what just means. Read. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 5. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. Right. So just means lawful and right. So let's go back. Just means lawful and right. Read. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. But the path of the just is as the shining light. Right. The path, the life, the ways of those that keep the commandments that are just and right is as the shining light. So the things that they do is, is going to, they're going to see things more wisely. They're going to be what's called more prudent in their daily actions. Read. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. All right. Um, Malachi, you got the scribe. Malachi, Israel. All praises. Thank you. So it says that shineth more. Read again. That shineth what? That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Right. And that means that as we continue to get better in this truth, to apply the commandments, to apply the just and right ways to our path, we shine more and more, meaning we get better and better every single day, okay? There comes times where we may fall, mm -hmm. but the scriptures say a righteous man falls seven times, and what does he do? He gets back up. The only way he's able to get up is by keeping good brothers around him, keeping good sisters around her, 
okay? The communication that they have on a daily basis. But when it goes into shineth more and more to the perfect day, meaning right now you may not, you're not going to be perfect. You understand? But as you continue in these paths, we're working on getting our mind right. You shine more and more. You get better and better until Christ returns. That's what it's going into. And that's the goal for us. Okay? So we're going to go into a few scriptures on how things could take us off the path from coming shining and shining into the perfect day. Because sometimes we get darker and darker into right. the perfect day. So we want to look at what creates us to either shine more or shine less, okay? Let's get Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. We're going to talk about the mind. We're going to talk about the heart. Come on. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Come on. Keep thy heart with all diligence. What does the word diligence mean? I want somebody to... If y'all know, uh, I like to ask questions. Shalom, sis. I like to ask questions, okay, when, when we teach. Um... What is it? What is the word diligence means? It says, "Keep your heart with all diligence." What is, what is diligence? What is diligence? And then what is the heart? Let's see that. Let's see if we know the basics. What is diligence? And then what is the heart? Who can help me? The scribe for today is the brother Malachi Israel. Okay, diligence. Michael says consistency and the heart is your mind. All right. The sister Judah says persistent. So diligent, it means consistency, persistent, detailed or consistency. Okay. Jerron says the heart is the mind. Absolutely. Correct. Okay. Very good. Very good. Read that again. Keep thy heart with all diligence. So, the heart being the mind, let's see if that's correct according to the scriptures. Let's go to Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. It says, keep your heart with all diligence. Okay? Yes, Naomi. Read. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men... Proceeds evil thoughts. So it says, from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Because Esau told us that our heart was this blood, this thing in our chest that pumps blood from the atrium to the ventricle and to the whatever and whatever. The Lord says the heart is at your mind, the thing that produces your thoughts. Read. Adulterers, fornication, murderers, thefts. Covetousness, mm -hmm. wickedness, deceitfulness, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. Foolishness. All of these things come from the thought. Because what? Before we uh, murder, before we commit adultery, before we have covetousness, which is wanting somebody, lusting after somebody else's goods or mm -hmm. whatever, it starts in the mind. Okay? And so when we have these thoughts what happens does it stay within us does it continue do we get do we shine more and more or do we get darker and darker mm. okay read it again verse 21 read it again mark chapter 7 verse 21 mm -hmm. from within out of the heart of men proceeds evil thoughts right the thoughts come from the heart let's go back to proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 we're just hitting a couple of basics we want to see what the heart is come on Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. So the Lord says, keep or watch your heart with all carefulness, consistency, being detailed in the things that you're actually thinking about, knowing that you're thinking about them. Watch your heart, your mind, what comes into your mind and what comes out of your mouth with all carefulness. Read. For out of it, are the issues of life for out of it out of the mind comes the issues of life so if there are good issues then guess what your actions were created by the thoughts you had or the thoughts we have 
if there are bad issues and it's always bad, guess what? You thinking about bad things. Mm. You you bringing those bad things to you. You talking about it. Your actions are going into it. Okay. So I know Esau in the world. They say the law of attraction. You get what I'm saying? They say what you think, but hey, the scripture goes into it. You think about these things long enough, you're going to eventually do it, okay? And then what? You're going to bring these people around you. You guys, uh, hold on, this light right here is a little bright. One second. Uh-huh. All right. Oh, it's this one. Too. Boom and boom. All right. Your head was too shiny, Papa. Wow. Yeah, it was shiny head. All right. All persons. All right. Um, let's get it. Let's continue. Let's go uh, read it one more time. Verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Right. Out of the mind comes the issues of life. Okay. So making sure that we have the right thoughts when we wake up. Making sure we have the right thoughts when we go to bed. Making sure. It's a process. Is it hard? Absolutely. But it's a process. It's something that we have to do on a daily basis. Let's go to Sirach, chapter 5, verse 2. We're going to continue with this heart thing. And remember, before I even bring out a precept, I'm talking to me before I even talk to you, before I talk to any other brothers, I'm talking to me first. All right? And that's how all teachers should be. We should understand because the scriptures say it's a double-edged sword. Okay? Cuts me, cuts you. Let's go. Sirach chapter 5 verse 2. Follow not thy own mind. Do what? Follow not thy own mind. Right. So the things that are in your heart that you know are not just, are not right, are not good. The Lord says you're supposed to know yourself to the point where <clears throat> you know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. Okay, why? So you can continue to shine more and more. It says, follow not thy own mind, read. And thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. You see that? To walk in the ways of your heart. This goes to prove that when you are thinking things, you're going to eventually walk in the ways of your heart. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, you decide. We decide that. Because here's the thing. A lot of people, they say, well, that sister made me do that. Or that brother made me do that. Or leadership was like this, so I had to respond like that. I brought it out before. Um, what is that called? R responsibility. And people think that it's talking about tasks and duties. Responsibility is your ability to respond to a certain situation, to a certain person. Your ability to respond. Is it high or is it low? What is your ability to be able to react or to respond? And if you find yourself on the lower spectrum where you have low or um, a low responsibility, there you go. So as a man thinks, so he is. Right. If you see yourself on the low part of the uh, responsibility, you always popping off, you always mad, you always thinking these crazy thoughts. It's time to, to find a different, um, a different way of thinking. And it's through the scriptures. We're going to bring that out as well. Okay? Read that one more time. Sirach chapter 5 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. Of thy heart, of your thoughts. All right? That's what it's going into. I read a, um, a quote. It said, watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become deeds. Watch your deeds. They become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. And character is everything. Okay, I'm going to read that one more time. Watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become deeds or actions. Watch your deeds or actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. And character is everything. Okay. And so that's what you that's where you see everything the person that makes us today started from the person we thought ourselves to be months years ago. You understand? Everything is created from the mind. Our thoughts create our habits, our actions, 
our words when you understand and so what we're going into today is learning the process of thoughts learning the process of actions and lord willing at the end kind of give our help with a solution of when those invasive or intrusive um habits or thoughts try to stick to become character what happens next what do we do at that point when it's already when we realize that we have these things because we do israel we do <laughs> all right let's go to um let's go to let's look at one of our foremothers i'm gonna look at hannah first samuel chapter one and let's start at verse five Wow, hey, all praises. I posted that exact analogy on my Facebook in 2010. There you go, all praise. In the spirit. Let's get that. First Samuel, chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy proportion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. So we're talking about our foremother, Hannah. Um, her husband, Elkanah, he... Um, they were trying to conceive and she didn't the lord it said the lord shut up her womb meaning she wasn't able to have she was barren wasn't able to have children read and her adversaries also provoked her sore mm -hmm. for to make her fret because the lord had shut up her wounds mm -hmm. and as he did so year by year when she went up to the house of the lord so she provoked her therefore she wept and did not eat because in that time it was an honorable and a blessed thing for a woman to have children they they that's that was their that was like their portion their husband their children every godly woman wanted to have children in that day now today in babylon you'd be like oh i just want to do my own thing mm. i'm too i'm too uh i'm too sophisticated i want to be single i want to i don't want to have no children i'm good what they say, uh, I grew up, I had five brothers and ten sisters. I, I had a big family. I don't want no children. Right. Back then, it was an honorable thing for the sisters to have children. So she was vexed at the, fa at the fact that she couldn't have children. Read. Verse 8. Then said Elkanai, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eateth thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee? Then ten sons? Right, a career woman. He says, um, okay, now he says, hey, I'm better to you than ten sons. I, hey, I'm the prize, baby. I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Mm. <laughs> what you what you want all them for? You got you got me. I'm the one. Alright? So this brother, she's like, nah, it ain't the same. It ain't, it's not the same. You 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 good. You know, you cool, I love you, but it's not the same, okay now, right. read. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunken. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. So Eli, the priest at the time, he is sitting in the in the temple of the Most High God when H Hannah comes in and she's praying. But I want y'all to listen to something. Read verse ten. And she was in bitterness of soul, mm -hmm. and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. So. She was in the temple, and she was praying unto the Lord, unto the Most High. Keep reading. It. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, mm -hmm. but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him out unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. All right, now we're going to continue. So... What happens is she said, you know, if you give me a man child, if you give me a son, I'm going to make this vow to give him to you. He's going to serve you. I'm not going to shave his head. He's, uh, I'm going to make sure that he's clean to you like the Nazarite. Read. Verse 12. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. So she was in the temple praying before the Lord and Eli comes in and he's like, he looking at the sister. He marked her mouth. Mm. He's like, what's going on over here? Remember, she was in anguish and soul. He says, what, what's that sister doing? Read. Now, Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. She spoke in her heart. 
Remember, the heart is the mind, and only her lips move. So this man come in, and he, he thinks something wrong with the sister. He don't know what's going on. She she probably crying, and yeah, the scripture says she was uh, vexed. She was crying, weeping, and Eli comes in and only sees her mouth moving. Read. But her voice was not heard. But her voice was not heard. A lot of people think that the Lord, what? Don't hear our, our thoughts. Right. If the Lord is able to hear your prayers, watch, we're going to read. If he's able to hear your prayers, the thoughts of righteousness, is it too far-fetched to say that he can hear the thoughts of foolishness as well? Mm. Let's see. Read. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Mm -hmm. Put away thy wine from thee. So he thought the sister was drunk. That's how much she was praying. You understand? She, you, we we would have thought she was crazy. Mm. <laughs> His sister was it was vexed. She was in anguish of spirit in her soul. Read verse fifteen. And Hannah answered and said, "No, my lord, I am a woman of a soulful spirit. Mm -hmm. I have drunken neither wine nor strong drink, mm -hmm. but have poured." Out my soul before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Beliel. Beliel. Yep. Go to verse 17. Verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee my petition that thou hast asked of him. All right. So, as we continue, she had to tell uh, um, Eli, like, look, I'm not drunk. This is me praying for this thing that I want to come to pass. But the point of it is, and she did have a son, uh, and his name was Samuel, okay? So, the point of it is, is that the Lord honored and heard her prayer that was, what, in her mind, okay? She didn't speak with her mouth. So, what we're looking at is, if the Lord can hear righteous thoughts, mm. if he can hear righteous prayers, you don't think that he's observing the way our mind operates? The way that we intake uh, communications of wickedness that obscures the the just within us is that is that too far fetched to say? Let's see, let's see, let's go to um, let's see if Christ did it. Let's go to Luke chapter six and verse forty five. Yep. Our Lord is the only one who knows the heart and can interpret our cry. Absolutely. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. Mm -hmm. So, out of the treasure of his heart, he brings forth that which is good. So, in his mind, if he stores up righteous things, if he does... You know, gets around good brothers. Good, uh, she gets around good sisters that has the the righteous conversation. They got the good music going. They got, you know, all these things. The the um, the atmosphere is conducive for spiritual growth. That's when the person grows. Okay, that's when the person grows. Read, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringing forth that which is evil. So, the brother. Or the sister that puts evil continually in their spirit, guess what? That which they bring forth, their actions, their deeds, the people they communicate with, the people that they um that they mesh with, is gonna be evil. So when we start to see all these things, like you you might start to um see yourself clicking up with people who are not other scriptures and things. You gotta, you gotta be able to look at your spirit. Mm -hmm. What are the things that's going into your, your your mind? That's allowing what the that that's that uh, stored treasure that's you putting into your own mind, your own spirit. A lot of times we gotta check ourselves. You get what I'm saying? A lot of times we gotta check ourselves. If um, no, I'm not gonna say that. Keep reading. <laughs> For of the abundance of the heart. His mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. And that's what was going on with the sister Hannah in the temple. Yep, stop listening to worldly music. And that used to be a thing. I'm going to keep it real with you, Israel. Uh, I I used to try to listen to worldly music when I was working out. Like, ah, here we go. But it just, it just, it felt, it felt wrong. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it felt wrong. And that's one thing, too, that our, our people don't understand. They say, you know, I'm mad that little little uh, little Tay Tay got shot. I'm mad that, you know, um, there's all these killers in Chicago. But a lot of a lot of our people worship the people like um what's the dude name from Chicago? Um come on. Mm. I got a brain fart. What's the brother name from Chicago with the dreadlocks? A lot of uh we look at brothers like uh Bobby Schmurda. We look at, you know, Trapper Die. There's conflicts in our in our own spirit. What's the brother name from Chicago? Um, I think he's went to jail. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There was another rapper, big time rapper in Chicago, just got gunned. Chief Keith. There we go. Thank you. I would have never got that. <laughs> Chief Keith. Mm-hmm. You see, a lot of our people worship that man. You understand? But here, Lil Dirk, same thing. But here's the thing too. Even the instrumentals can go into it because you remember when um, when David played the harp for Saul, mm-hmm. he just played. It didn't say he was a lyricist. It didn't say he was an MC, rapper. He, a rapper. You get what I'm saying? It was the there we go. FBG Duck got gunned down. Crazy things is happening to our people, and it starts from the music. You understand? We could put names up there for days. Back from Biggie, Tupac, all of that. All right? Art imitates life. You're absolutely right, Larry. Okay? So we look at these things. We look at the evil communication that's going on and what? It reproduces our thoughts. We're being programmed. So, yeah, music has a very big deal to do with it. Okay? Let's read it again. Luke chapter 4. Six. Like six verse forty five. Mm-hmm. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. Mm-hmm. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. Right. So we gotta look at what's in our spirit. Is it good actions that we're bringing in? Good. Continue to put good things into your spirit. Store up good things. But if we find ourselves on the other side where we're continually um, cussing or, or having a hateful spirit opprobrious words where we're always in debate with somebody or we'll always find ourselves somehow uh, dabbling in sin things like that we gotta go back to the root what is it that I'm putting within my spirit music. what is it music people you get what I'm saying because some people could be around and what they could just be talking in your ear and you take too much of it in that's why it says keep your heart with all diligence all diligence meaning everybody's words you don't have to listen to if it's not spiritual nah i ain't getting into that hey bro i ain't getting sis i ain't mm, nah i'm good but a lot of times israel we love that thing right we love that thing watch the scripture's gonna say it keep reading though verse 46 No, No, no yep Keep finishing. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Whatever is stored in your heart, guess what? Your mouth speaks. That's just like when we said, watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Your words become actions. You understand? So it says, out of the abundance, what you store within your spirit, within your mind, your mouth is going to speak. Right. It's just going to flow out. You're going to be like, oh, snaps, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Why I do I do the things that I don't want to do? Like, why do I do that? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When the mouth speaks, the actions come as well. You understand? It's a heavy thing. Right. Let's read that in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. Music and they shut this part. Yeah, you're right. Read that. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter, chapter eight, 8, verse 21. Mm-hmm. That I may cause those that I'm love I'm sorry, 18. Proverbs 18 and 21. That's me. That's me. Proverbs 18 and verse 21. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, if it's if it starts from the if it starts from the mind, 
And guess what? It flows to the tongue, your words. It says death and life are in the power of the tongue. So if it's in the power of the tongue, that means it's, it's also in the mind. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's the things that you store up in your mind that come out. Read it again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Come on. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Meaning that that's what they're always going to do. Either they're going to speak life. Either they're going to speak good things. Or they're going to speak evil things. Or they're going to think evil things. Or they're going to think good things. You understand? And, and, and it says that they love it. Mm. When you love something, you stay on that thing. You meditate on that. You you find yourself always being with that or around oh, it or, yeah. or, or or trying to engage or you're looking for that. You see what I'm saying? It's when you love something, it you're trying to find you're trying to be with that every single day, every single moment. So the scripture says if it's good, you're gonna be around good every single day. Every single moment, you're going to put that into your spirit. Store that treasure within you. But if you love darkness, if you love uh, a sin, if you love, you know, death, those are the things you're going to store up as well. Where? In your spirit, in your mind. Read it again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You know how you could tell when a person loves the power of the uh, a death, which is in the power of the tongue, when they're always talking about somebody else. Right. When they're always talking about what they don't like. When they always, when they always, uh, when she, the sister's always cussing her lord out. When the husband is always cussing his wife out. You get what I'm saying? Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And if you love that thing, that's what you're going to do on a daily basis. But it starts in the spirit. It starts in the mind. It's a heavy thing. That's what we're going into today. What are we thinking? What are, what are we thinking as creating these actions that we've just... Yep, you're right. Look, the subconscious mind. The part of the mind that holds memory in an automatic state of being. A lot of times, listen, a lot of times you may not realize that, that that's the spirit you have. When we come into this true... We, when the scriptures say examine ourselves, we really have to examine ourselves. Believe it or not, a lot of us are still dealing with what? Trauma, not just from slavery, but from the way that our parents were, from the way that our aunties and our grandparents were, from the way that our cousins, we're still dealing with that trauma. But we, the only way to, to get through it, past it, is through the scriptures and acknowledging that you actually have those problems. The way to know that you have those problems is, do I think about that often? Is that the thing that I'm storing in my mind? What you think about, you bring forth. You're absolutely right. That's a heavy thing, Israel. And I'm telling you this because I had to go through it myself. I'm going through it. I'm like, yo, why, why am I thinking... Ah, that old man. That's right. an old nigga right there, man. That's what it is. Get off me. I, f I feel him. You get what I'm saying? It's the old man trying to bring you back. It's a heavy thing. Backslide. Backslide. It's a, it's a heavy thing that just grab the back of your head and one. Just chill, baby. Just chill, baby. That's how it is. You understand? But you got to acknowledge that thought. Okay? Yes. Envying. Jealousy. I'm jealous about this sister. I'm jealous about that brother. I envy them. I want. I should have been an officer this long ago. Covetous. Covetous. Why is that sister proving that sister, uh, that brother? Whatever the case may be, there's some crazy things that happen, and it's all we all got a story. You understand? Let's go to. Um, but here's the thing: Is it my testimony that matters? No. Right. At the end of the day, it's the Lord's testimony that matters. Because the only thing that can clean us up is, watch this, watch this. I'm going to derail a little bit. But it's still, it's still in the same vein. Go to um, Psalms 
chapter 19 and verse 7. Watch this, watch this. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. And then we're going to go to um, Romans 2.13. You're dealing with it? Okay. We, we, we all dealing with this, bro, whether we say it or not. Okay, read. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. When is the last time that you've held something perfect in your hands? I mean, you got the iPhone, which is close to perfection, but it's not perfect. You understand? You 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 might have you know um, uh, I don't know your car. You might have certain things, but it's none of it is perfect. Right. When is the last time you were able to look into something that's just straight perfect? You understand? The scriptures it says it's perfect. The laws of the Most High are perfect. With this perfect thing, what happens? Read. Converting the soul. It converts. It changes the soul. It changes the, the, the clothing? The soul. The soul. From inside out. The very essence of a person. A newborn creature. And that's why you look at the Christian church. The person goes in. And uh, the person goes, goes in a sinner. Come right back out a sinner. Right. <laughs> there's no conversion going on. Why? Because there's no laws going on. Okay. Read, read it again. Converting. Converting the soul. Mm -hmm. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. It makes a simple person wise. But is it just reading the scriptures that makes it wise? Is it just uh, uh, listening or putting on patient saints or putting on the classes that makes it wise? I got my incense burning. I got the frankincense and myrrh all the way to the point that I can't see. I'm reading Exodus and it feel like it feel like the Lord is in this thing. Mm. He didn't descend it in my house. I can't see nothing. Is it just reading and listening to the thing? There you go, Josiah. It's the application thereof. Now, yes, reading, listening, creating that atmosphere. Those are the things that's going to help strengthen our mind. But if there's no action... There's nothing. Read Romans chapter 2 and verse 13. Here we go. Sister said applying. Jesus called the Messiah. All praises. Call him Yeshua. Call him Messiah. Whatever you want to. All right. Let's keep his commandments. Read. Romans chapter 2 verse 13. Mm -hmm. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. Not just the hearers of the law are just. Read. But the doers of the law shall be justified. But the doers thereof shall be justified by keeping the commandments of the Most High God. Those are the ones that the Lord is going to look at. You know what? Yeah, he, he or she fell, but they got back up. They applied that law. They're not doing that more. Right. How can I, how, how can, you know, how can I say, you forgive your brother 70 times 7, and I don't forgive my people when they get up? You understand? That's the mindset we got to have. You know what? I'm not going to do that no more. I fail, I'm not gonna do that no more. I gotta I gotta stay away from that thing. When we the things that we're fighting with, the goal is to make us stronger. That's why it hasn't been taken away from us. Just like you look at the other nations. When you read, I believe it's in Judges, where it talks about how the Lord kept the nations around us to teach us war, to teach us certain things. These things are not going anywhere. Give me um give me second Esdras. 3 and 20, I believe. I'm shooting from the hip, y'all. Give me one second. Um, yep, read that. Second Ezra. Chapter 2, verse... Chapter 3 and verse 20. Chapter be 3, verse 20. Because the question is, why don't the Lord just... If, we, if he wanted us to be perfect, why don't he just, you know, just take it all away? He could just... Ev just evaporate sin. That's how um, I, w I went to school. I'm, I went to school for a very long time uh, learning Christian apologetics. Learning, I really thought that I was going to be a Christian apologetics. You get what I'm saying? Defending the gospel, as they say. But I am now truly defending the gospel. Mm. You understand? So a lot of times they'll say, if God was good, why doesn't he just eradicate sin? 
If he was all good, he would just eradicate evil, wouldn't he? <laughs> Read this. Second Ezra chapter 3 and verse 20. Come on. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart. The Lord says he didn't take away from them a wicked heart, which is what? Your mind. He didn't take away wicked thoughts, wicked wicked uh, uh, existence on the face of the earth. Read. That thy law might bring forth fruit in them. That the laws of the Most High would bring forth fruit in us. We see we made the wrong action and guess what? Ah, you know what? That discipline... <laughs> That discipline is, is too much. Let me change the way that I'm thinking. Let me change the way that I'm moving. Let me change the people that I have around me. His, his laws, that's how it becomes fruit in us. He can't take it away. That's how we grow. You understand? Hey, um, Ellie, Larry, the conversation about the Messiah and everything like that, uh, just put it off to the side. All right, let's make sure we're paying attention to the class and not disturbing our brothers and our sisters, okay? Let's be, let's stay on point. Let's stay on topic, doing things decently and in order as 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 says, all right? Read it again. 2nd Esther chapter 3 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. And yet took it thou not away from them a wicked heart. A wicked heart, wicked thoughts, read. That thy law might bring forth fruit. In them. The Lord wants laws to bring forth, or he wants these things that we go through to struggle to bring forth fruit in us. You understand? That's why it's still here. That's why these nations are still here to see. Yes, you got a, 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 a two for ten, a ten for two, or whatever like that on a Saturday. Are you going to break my laws? Are you going you gonna to break the commandments to do that? Are you going to buy and sell because the pork chop came out with a new glisten on it? Hmm. You understand? No. No, it looked good, but it's not good. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. So I just wanted to bring that out. Um, let's go to Luke chapter 9 and verse 47. Luke chapter 9 and verse 47. We're going into the thoughts. We're going into our words, our thoughts becoming words, our words becoming actions, our actions becoming habits, and our habits becoming exactly who we are. Actually, hold what we have. Go to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 1. This is an example. When I was reading Jeremiah, this stood out to me, okay? Um, because we wouldn't be strong without the workout. Oh, praise. There you go. You can't be strong without working out. You got to tear the muscle fibers, then get that muscle milk. You know, the proteins to rebuild your muscle fibers, and that's how you get bigger, you get stronger. You got to have resistance. Resistance is everything. Okay? Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. That means it's seared within the minds of our people. Keep reading. And with the... Points of a diamond. And with a point of a diamond. It says that Israel's sin is so deep, it's like it was written with, with, with the tip of an iron and a pin of a diamond. Diamonds are very sharp. Only a diamond can cut diamonds. Right. You understand? So you look at, you think, you look at the hieroglyphs, you look at all these things um, that you just etch in, in, uh, in stone and all of that. God says... Our, our, the sin of his people is so deep within the mind, it might as well have been written in there with a diamond. Mm. Might as well have been carved out with iron, a pen of iron. That's where it starts. Because if we don't correct it, if we don't catch it, if we don't examine ourselves and change it, then guess what? We might as well be written in with a pen of iron and with the diamond or, or the point of a diamond in our mind. That's what the Lord is saying. Israel's like that. And guess what? When our parents are like that, they trying to etch it in your mind. That's where Christmas comes from. That's where the pants come from. That's where the attitude comes from. That's where all of these things come from prior to the truth that we have to what? Become renewed. Give me 2nd Ezra 1434. This is the renewal process. That's why he says become as a babe. Because Israel, their mind, our minds were sketched already. Our minds from our foreparents and, and, and our mothers and our grandparents taught us wicked things. 
So we have to become born again. Watch this. Read. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if so that Therefore, if so, be that ye will subdue your own understanding. The Lord says, therefore, if so, be that ye will subdue your own understanding. The own understanding of what? The learned behaviors. Mm. The things that we've, that we've been programmed to do, programmed to respond in a certain way. Lord said, if you will subdue that, if you bring it to subjection, if you listen to actually what you're thinking, I had an instance yesterday where I heard what I was thinking. I'm like, yo, that's wicked as hell. You have to subdue your own understanding, the things that you've learned before, read. And reform your heart. And change your mind. Why do you change your mind? So that you can change your words. Why do you change your words? So you can change your actions. Why do you change your actions? So you can change your habits. Your habits can change you to change your character, who you are. A strong sister in this truth, a strong brother in this truth, fell, got up, kept going, kept moving, right. shaking it off. That's what it's going into. Read. And and after death, ye shall obtain mercy. Who mm -hmm. started? Read it. Go ahead. Therefore, if so be that ye subdue your own understanding. And reform your hearts, mm -hmm. ye shall be kept alive. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. Right. And a lot of people, we forget about that after death part. Mm. We, we look at what's going on right now. This is just the pregame. This is just the pregame. This is preseason. Everything we do is getting us primed or ready for the wilderness or thereafter. So the Lord says, if you subdue your heart now, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But if you subdue it, then I'm going to keep you alive from these nuclear fires and you will be preserved from death, from pain, even after death. That's a heavy thing. The Lord says it's worth it. The Lord says it's worth it. Watch this. Give me Romans chapter 18 and verse 28. Because a lot of people be like, I don't know. You might be on the fence right now in this truth. Because what? Some of us can't congregate. Some of us is having uh, marital issues. Some of us is having congregational issues. Some of us are having personal issues. The three trials of faith, like this uh, bishop brought out. If you haven't seen that class, watch it over and over again. All right? This is a trying period for the children of Israel. 18 and 28. Romans? Yep. You know 18. Uh, 8 and 28. Maybe I'm tripping. You know I'm... And you know that. Uh, no, no, no. Let me get... Hmm. Let me one second, Israel. Yeah, I be trying to come from the hip sometimes, man. <laughs> hey, all right. Say something. Say something. So yeah, one one thing we gotta understand is that also our communication is very important because we we gotta be careful who we communicate with and how long we communicate with those people. That's not of God that's not keeping the commandments that don't have the spirit on them so that's very important that, that we need to uh, be uh, be more conscious of who we're communicating with and what we're listening to you know what I'm saying so that's that's very key that mm -hmm. we stay on that, that, that right track that we don't yep. fall off of and you know what's crazy about that a lot of times we'll talk to somebody that hasn't been in a truth as long as we have. Sometimes we'll talk to people that don't know nothing about the truth. Right. Because what? It, <laughs> it, it soothes your, your excuse. Right. There's no correction in that. You got marital issues. You go to your mama that's not in the truth for counsel? Hmm. You, you got marital issues. You go to your uncle that's not in the truth for counsel. And this is the same uncle that told you, man, you better sow your royal seed while you can. Right. For counsel? It's a heavy thing. The Lord says subdue your own understanding. All right? Right. 8 and 18. That's where we wanted to go. Yes, evil communication corrupts good manners. That's it. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. That's where you find that one. Great, great precept. 
Read Romans that. chapter 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Right, because a lot of times there are people we have to cut off. There are mute, there are certain things that we like in this world that we have to cut off in order to get closer to that shining and shining to become perfect. To there's certain people, there's certain things, there's certain um there's certain smells that we have to cut off. A lot of things, they're called triggers, right? That makes you think about when you was in the world. Okay? The Lord says that, read it again. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time... Whether it be physical suffering, whether it be emotional suffering, whether it be spiritual, financial suffering, any type of suffering we go through, read are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It's not even worthy to be compared to what the Most High is going to give us if we endure, Right. if we subdue our own understanding. It can't be compared to what the Most High is going to give us, what He's going to call you, your new name, your new location on earth, your new body, your new mind. It's a heavy thing. You got to go through the war. We have to suffer during this time. You understand why so that we can get better and better and become perfect okay let's uh let's continue let's go back to luke chapter 9 and verse 47. my computer die on me luke 9 and 40, verse 47. luke chapter 9 verse 47 mm -hmm. and jesus proceeding the thoughts of their hearts took a child and set him by him. So, it says that the Lord, what? He did what? The, took a child and set him by him. No, the Lord um, understood their thoughts. Or what was it? Verse 46. Verse 46. Uh-huh. Then these arose a reason. No, no, no. Verse 47. I'm verse sorry. Verse 47. And Jesus perceiving the thoughts of their hearts. So, he perceived, perceiving the thoughts of their heart. If the heart is the mind and he understands what you're thinking, that means he hears your, he hears what's going on in up top. Remember, we read about the sister Hannah when she was praying and no words came out, but her prayer was still answered, meaning the Lord perceives your thoughts. That's why it says uh, in Romans where uh, it says that the body has uh, spiritual groanings. Right. I forget how it's going. I'm, I'm butchering it. But it says it prays for us when we don't know what to pray for. Right. The Lord understands already what's going on within us. Do you understand what's going on within you? That's why the scripture talks about us. Um, uh, I just had a brain fart. It talks about us examining ourselves, examining ourselves. All right, Mr. Larry Williams, let's get off the name. I, I don't like blocking people uh, on here, but I definitely will do it. And it may bring me joy just to save the, the peace and the um, preservation of the attention of Israel. Okay, so don't let that be you. Read it again. Luke chapter 9 and verse 47. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, proceeding the thoughts of their hearts, took a child and set him by him. So, the Lord perceived the thoughts of the people. Okay? He perceived the thoughts of the people. He's looking at our thoughts as well. Let's continue. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 21. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 21. What did the Lord come to do with the law? Because a lot of people, and especially in the Christian church, okay, they say, oh, those things are done away with. He doesn't, he, it's not really as important as it is now as it was back then. Right. Let's see if the Lord cares about his laws. Read. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. For his righteousness sake. Come on. He was magnified. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. That was his goal. That is his goal, is to magnify the law and make it honorable. Oh, you thought it was talking about that. No, 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 no. We're going to take all the meat off the bone. Mm. 
I'm gonna show you the the I'm gonna show you the sinews. We gonna get into it. I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna all the way to the gristle, all the way to the to the calcium. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The Lord said he came to magnify the law and make it honorable. How did he do that? Give me, what's some examples of how the Lord magnified the law and made it honorable? Don't overthink it. How did the Lord magnify the law and make it honorable? You still got your phone time in there. Got a couple more scriptures. We, we he and to perfect the law. Okay, give me more. How did how did he magnify it? I like that to perfect the law. How did he magnify it? Ah, there we go. Hezekiah. All right, that's one example. Okay, he did the laws. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, fulfilling prophecy. Let's get that. Let's get Matthew 5. Very good. He walked by example. Yep, he made it honorable. Because when you look at it, the Pharisees, they were saying one thing and they was doing another. Christ both said and did. <laughs> he brought honor back to the laws of the Most High God. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Not uh, not an eye for eye or tooth for tooth. Christ said, if you even look at a maid, you're right, Adam. You already committed adultery. That's right. a heavy thing. Why? Because it starts in the mind. Right. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. It's a heavy thing. Read. By telling us, even if we look upon a woman, we are committing sin. Absolutely. Shout out to Bakersfield. Messiah Christ blessed. Read. Chapter 5, Matthew's chapter 5, verse 28. Start at verse 25. Matthew's chapter 5, verse 25. Agree with thy... Start at verse 23. Verse 24. Lead, lead there by gifts. I'm sorry, bro. He's going to... Start at verse 21. We're going to start... We're going to read down. Matthew 5, verse 21. Matthew's chapter 5, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. A, a, an old time read thou shall not kill and whomsoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment mm -hmm. but I say unto you that whomsoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment right so the Lord says look you've heard in the old time say thou shall not what thou shall not kill right thou shall not kill that's that's the law but he says, if you hate your brother without a cause, you still gonna be in danger of the judgment. Why? Because murder, killing, hatred starts in the mind as well. The magnification comes in before it becomes an action. Zoom in and examine your spirit. Heavy thing. Larry just got blocked. Okay, mm. read. And whomsoever shall say to his brother, Raka shall be in the danger of the council. Mm -hmm. But whomsoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembrance that thy brother has ought against thee, lead there thy gifts before the altar. So it's saying, if you go up to give a sacrifice, like what? Like the Day of Atonement. If you go into, go into the Day of Atonement, and you realize that you have hatred or some type of odd, maybe you have the chance to examine yourself. Lord says, if you find and when you examine yourself that you have some type of a hatred, rakaz, I think it's going into fool, meaning that you have this internal hatred for someone to the point where you don't want to correct them, to the point where you're not trying to, um, where you, to the point where, um, you're not trying to correct them. Bring them back to the spirit. That's what it's going into. You're going to be in danger of the hell fire. Read. But if you have a gift, like we go up to the day of atonement and you still have hatred in your spirit. Read. Verse 24. Leave there thy gift before the altar mm -hmm. and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come offer 
thy gift. Then the Lord says your gift will be accepted. Meaning, don't come to me talking about forgive me of my sins and you still got hatred and you still got uh, uh, malice and envy for somebody else because it's not going to be accepted. That's what the Lord is going into in these days. Okay, keep reading. Verse 25, agree with thy adversary quickly while thou art in thy way with him. Mm -hmm. Let's Go to verse 28. Verse, verse 27. Verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. And that's where it starts. It starts in the mind. Okay? It starts in the mind. All right. Yep. Israel, make sure you stay focused. I don't want to. I don't want to say it again. Larry has been blocked, and uh, if we need to, I'll find a couple more. All right. I don't want to do that. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Um, almost done. We got a few scriptures left. Go to what, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one and verse three. So we're gonna look at the word forward. Forward is habitually disposed to disobedience or opposition in our mind. Being opposed in our mind to the Most High God. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 3. Let's go. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For forward thoughts separate from God. Right. The forward thoughts. The continual thoughts of sin, of foolishness, thinking, oh, do I want to download the Tinder accounts? Do I want to do I want to talk to do these things that I used to do? Do I want to meddle back in it? Mm, dabble, dabble, dip, dip. These things, the Lord says, look, man, that's separating you from me. I don't want nothing to do with that. <laughs> I, I don't want nothing to do with the weed smoke. I don't want nothing to do with the adultery. I don't want nothing to do with the murder. I don't, I'm not, I'm not chilling with you when you listening to Bobby Schmurder. Right. I'm not there when you bumping your head to Chief Keith. Mm. The scripture says that light cannot dwell with darkness. When when you bump in and that's a that's a that's a that's a movement of worship. When you listen to Chief Keith, like uh yeah. mm, bruh, the Lord is not bobbing his head with you. Like, dang, that brother got some bars. You heard that? The Lord ain't with it. You get what I'm saying? The Lord ain't with it. Alright. Uh no, we gonna block this brother right here. Sorry, my brother. Boom. All right. Let's continue. Proverbs 24 and 9. Let me finish reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 3. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 3. Uh -huh. For forward thoughts separate from God and his power. When it is tried, reproveth the unwise. It reproveth the unwise. You might think you could try the most high. But hey, your arms is too short to box with God. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's continue. Let's go uh, Proverbs 24 and 9. We're going to get through these last couple scriptures. If anybody has any questions on today's topic, if anybody has uh, questions on today's topic, post them in the comment box. Let's go. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thoughts of foolishness is sin. That's what the Lord been talking about in Matthew chapter 5. You in old time you 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 heard of this, but I say if you even think about this, why? Because your thoughts become your words. Right. Your words become your actions. The thought itself, it only it's only sin when you bring forth the action and you don't correct it. Yes, my block hand is strong. Block 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 block. Delete. Okay. Right. So we ain't having it today. What's Wednesday? We halfway through the week. They say, let's just keep it. Let's let's stay in the spirit. All right. My I've been my block hand is strong. That's my first time blocking somebody. I blocked two people in one day. All right. All praises to the Most High God. He has strengthened my fingers. <laughs> That's right. All right. Read it one more time. Proverbs chapter twenty four verse nine. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought itself of foolishness is sin. The, the 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 continual uh forward thoughts is sin to the most high because you you separating yourself from him. Alright? You separating yourself from him. Ooh, I think I see a third. I don't know. You getting close. Defiling the temple. Let's go. Um you defiling your temple with, with impure thoughts. 
All right. Let's continue. Galatians 6 and 7. Galatians. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. It's the small victories, man. The small victories. I finally... Mm, mm, mm. Read. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Nah, stay in the spirit, Israel. Come on. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also weep. So the scripture says, don't be deceived. Whatever you thinking, don't think. <laughs> because God will not be mocked. Whatsoever you soweth, the thing that you put into your spirit, you're going to receive from that. So are you building blocks of righteousness? Are you building blocks of darkness, of wickedness, of sin? Whatever... That's the universal law. It's just is what it is. You plant a seed and you water that thing and you give it enough sunlight and attention, something's going to grow. It's the same with the spirit. What are you putting in your spirit on a daily basis? That's what you're going to eat thereof. Do you love life or do you love death? Right. Whatever you plant, that's what you're going to eat thereof. The Lord says it's a universal law. You understand that? So what are we putting into our spirit? The actions, the thoughts becoming actions. Universal law. It just is what it is. That's why he says do not be mocked. So you think, uh-oh, boom, look at that. Got a third. You see that? Mm -hmm. Boom! Boy, I'll tell you what. So the Lord says, what you sow, you shall also reap. All right? The same goes with plants. The same goes with children. The same goes with... Uh, um, a job You get what I'm saying If you suck at, if you suck at your job And you're not doing it well Guess what <laughs> You well, gonna reap a broke right. man's benefits <laughs> Alright Flawless victory Shashin. All right, Let's go uh, Read it one more time Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 Be not deceived God is not mocked mm -hmm. For whatsoever a man soweth That shall he also reap Right Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Either it's righteousness or whether it's wickedness, you will in time, in time, get it back. It may not come um, tomorrow. Right. It may not come next week. It may not come two weeks from now. But eventually, it is going to come. And when it comes, it's going to come with a vengeance. You understand that? If you don't correct it. Let's go. To James chapter one, I got three more scriptures, Israel, and then, and then the uh, the block ex exhibition is over. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go. James chapter one, verse twelve through fifteen. Let's read this quick. Okay, James chapter one, verse twelve. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, uh -huh. which the Lord hath promised to them. That love him. Right. The goal is to endure temptation, to continually fight against it. You fall, you got to get back up. The righteous man falls and gets back up again. Right. The scripture says you, that's the process of enduring, that you shine of shining more into the perfect day. He wanted, if he wanted to take it away, he would have been took it away. But the scripture says in Sirach, I mean, second Esther 3 and 20 that he didn't take it away so they could bring forth fruits within us the law bring forth fruits read verse 13 come on let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of god god is tempting me with this evil man right. he i think he wants me to fall i think you know um I, I i think he wants me to smoke this i think he wants me to be with this sister i think uh she wants me to, you know, he wants me to be with this brother or whatever the case may be. The Lord, he ain't, no. Right. You can't say that the Lord did it. Read. Why? Come on. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Because that's how you, it says, be not deceived. God will not be mocked. You trying to think, it, you think it was the most high doing it. Right. It's you. <laughs> Read. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Come on. Neither tempted he any man. Come on. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of when his... When he is what? When he is drawn away. Drawn away. Being drawn away is a process. That's what it goes into. When you're drawn away from something, like, hey, come over here. You're drawing somebody's attention. It's a process of being detoured from the right path. That's what happens. It says when, but every man, what? When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. 
and when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That's where it comes from. It comes from the mind. Thinking too long upon these things, sowing these seeds, guess what? Now it's reaping time. Right. You sow for so long, it's a universal law. Now it's time to reap because that's what you kept thinking about. Right. That's what you kept doing. That's what you kept saying. Read. Verse 15. Then when lust had conceived, it bring forth sin. Then when that lust conceived, you get that opportunity. Guess what? Now the thought of discipline is no longer there. Now the thought of, let me think of the, spirit, of the scriptures, let me call my brother, let me call my sister, let me fast real quick, let me put on some right. Now when you're in the moment, when the Lord, when the, uh, the devil opens that door, the Lord is no longer on the other side. What they say, you keep knocking on the devil's door, eventually he's going to answer. Right. You sow and you will reap. Read. Then when lust hath conceived, it bring forth sin. Uh-huh. And sin, when it, it is finished... Bring forth death. And sin, when it's finished, it brings forth death. Because not too many people feel spectacular after sin. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Imagine that. Not too many people are like, man, <laughs> spiritual, spiritual. We talking about Israel. Feel spectacular after sin. We, sp we feel dirty. We feel uh, used, abused. My uncle used to say, sin, it'll take you further than you want to go and cost more than you can afford. Wow. It's a heavy thing. What do we think in Israel? Thoughts leads to actions. That's where we are right now. Remember, as we go on through the days, as we go on through the times, really listen to that inner man and do the opposite of what the, the old man is trying to do. It, you, you'll hear it. You will hear it. Two more scriptures. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 28. Baruch chapter 4, verse 28. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 28. Mm -hmm. for, at, for as it was our mind to go astray from God, mm -hmm. so being returned, seek him ten times more. Right. So it says it was our mind to go astray from God. But when you return, when you get your mind together, when you get yourself together, you got to seek him ten times more. That's the only way to... You got to... What we say, you uh, take 10 steps forward and three steps back. You got to take 10 steps forward and 10 steps forward. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Or 10 steps forward, one step back. 11 steps forward, one step back. Whatever you got to do, keep moving. Fast two times a week. What was the sister Judith? She was fasting every day except for the Sabbath and uh, high holy days and, uh, and feasts. You understand? Sometimes we just got to do that. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Only you know. You understand? Only you can prevent eternal fire. And it's like Smokey the Bear. Right. Only you can prevent eternal fire. Last precept. Let's go to uh, Philippians 4 and 8. I pray that these things, you know, we can meditate on this. I've been meditating on it. I've been applying these things. And the goal is to, yes, confess your sins. Confess it and forsake it. You understand? That's how you get rid. That's that's how you uh, because yes, it is sin is a shameful thing. The only way to to hold on to the shame is when you're holding on to the shame. That's why it says confess. You can't be forgiven. Guess what? If you don't forgive yourself, if you don't forgive your brothers, if your brothers or sisters don't forgive you. Forgiveness all the way around is key to being re to being um, uh, free from that sin or the shame. Okay, read this. Philippians chapter four verse eight. Come on. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. So we're talking about whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. Okay, how because once these intrusive or invasive thoughts come in. How do I combat these things? Mm. We read subdue your own understanding. We read Psalms 19 and 7. It converts the soul, the laws, the rehearsing and the doing of the laws. But then what, what happens when it just, it just, it's just in here and I can't stop these wicked thoughts? Read. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, 
whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Do what? Think on these things. So he says, think on these things. It's where we get so caught up in the drama. We get so caught up in the hoopla of life that we don't think about lovely things. We don't think about the things that are just, the things that are pure. He says, whatever else is of virtue, whatever else is of beauty, like just, just brings harmony in the scriptures and, and just helps you and your spirit think upon those things. You understand? That's how we combat that. All right? That's how we combat those thoughts. Now, I'm not talking about if you have, like, depression and you have to be on medication and whatever. To do what your doctor told you to do. You understand? But at the same time, the spirit, the spirit is going to help produce a stronger spirit. And our spirit is in the Bible. That's it's right. in the scriptures. The performing of the laws get around good people confess to, to to somebody that can help you you understand confess to somebody that can help you all right so i pray that we all got something out of this your thoughts become your actions or your thoughts become your words your words become your actions your actions become your habits and your habits become who you are your character all right anybody have um any questions? Anybody have any questions about the class? Make sure you reach out. If you haven't gotten in contact with somebody in your state, go to www.israelunite.org slash contact us. You don't have to do it alone. Give me that real quick. Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to go. Don't try to go alone. You know oh, I can do it on my own. You might. You you might think you can, but you can't. <laughs> you know. You might think you can, but you cannot. Trust me. Read Ecclesiastes chapter four and verse nine. Two are better than one because they have a good report for their labor. Mm -hmm. For if they fell, fall, the one will lift up the, his fellow. Because the, you could tell when somebody is is trying to it, make a way out of this truth when they fall and they don't never come around again. They don't never want to be around nobody. Lord says, get around people so that when you do fall, they can help you get back up. That's how you do that. You want to learn uh, a precept on being honest. Um, give me Sirach chapter 37 and verse 12. There's many, but this is the one um, that segues from the other, other scriptures. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Be continually with a godly man. That's how you learn how to be honest, is you be continually with godly men. They're going to tell you the truth. <laughs> a godly sister, they're going to tell you the truth. And then eventually it's going to rub off on you. Right. Then you're going to start telling the truth. They're going to catch you in a lie. They're going to be like, sis, <laughs> nah, you, your story ain't adding up. Be like, damn, you know what? All right, my bad. You understand? That's the scripture. That helps you to, number one, get around good people. And number two, listen to what they're saying. Take that counsel. All right? Be continually with the godly man who now knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. They're going to be honest with you, sometimes brutally honest. All right? All right? All praises, all praises. All right, family. Um, so in falling, is this the sin? And when getting up and pushing forward, is this confessing and applying the law moving forward? Absolutely, Brother Ronnie. Yep. Being in, not, it's not so much being enticed as the falling. Because Christ was tempted in all ways, but he never sinned. It's not the temptation. It's the falling into the temptation. Giving over to it and and not correcting yourself is what e e leads to the eternal fire right. or the Stand condemnation. In. Staying, Staying in it. it. Staying right. in it. The pity party. The self-soaking. You got to eventually, right. you got to get out. You have to. And to help with that, contact your local camp. Contact your brothers. Contact your sisters that you know to keep the commandments of the Lord. All right? Malachi I've been on here too long, Israel. Yep, Malachi 3 and 16. All right. They that fear the Lord spake often, and a book of remembrance was written of them. Okay. 
Been on too long, Israel. I gotta go. Most High in Christ bless you all. And um, remember, the Day of Atonement is coming up. Let it go. Let it go. All right? All praises, family. Most High in Christ bless. Shalom. Most High in Christ bless. Again, I'm Officer Baruch. Officer Benea. IUIC Orlando. Blessed to be here. Most High in Christ bless you all. Shalom. Shalom. Yes, Solomon. That's what it's going into as well. All right. Shalom.